Formula One is thriving. They brought in $3.5 billion in 2023. But where does all this money come from? And just where does it go to? Well, turns out there's a lot involved in this process, and it's time people found out just how much of a lucrative business Formula One is. Here's everything you need to know about the role of money in Formula One. Some teams in Formula One make way more than you think. Like in 2023, teams like Red Bull and Mercedes were seriously living it up big, hauling in around $270 million in profit. But let's just say not every other team is as lucky. Consider the other eight teams that competed that year. For them, it was more of a break-even game. Almost every team, indeed, gets a massive budget to work with, with the top teams getting as much as $135 million. So, where does all the cash disappear to? Well, F1 isn't just any old sport. It attracts the best drivers, engineers, and minds. Plus, there's a huge cost of research, development, and the logistical nightmare of jetting off to every race. We'll cover that in a bit more detail later, but just know that none of this is cheap. And hey, the F1 calendar isn't exactly light. It had 22 races in 2021, bumping up to 23 in the next two years and about 24 for 2024. But of course, the only reason the sport has endured for so long is because, despite the heavy investments, the teams are still managing to make quite a bit of cash in return. That's because, unlike other sports where talent can offer Trump treasure, Formula One operates on a pay-to-play basis. This means that yes, the big bucks do roll in like an impressive $2.5 billion in 2022, which rose to over $3.5 billion in 2023. Most of this cash goes to the team's laps, but let's not forget the drivers. The top-tier racers can cash in a cool $70 million annually, putting them among the world's highest paid athletes. But Formula One's financial frenzy isn't just reserved for the elite. It trickles all the way down to karting, where costs can soar into six figures. So clearly, these guys are making quite a lot of money. But just where does it come from? First up, we've got prize money. This is the biggest sum of F1 income. Teams generate money from various revenue streams. But prize money takes the pole position. Here's how it works. F1 dishes out prize money based on a team's performance in the Constructors' Championship. The higher you finish, the fatter your share. For instance, the top team bags at juicy 14%, while the tail ender gets a smaller slice at 6%. In the 2023 season, this prize pot hit a massive $900 million. Those aren't small numbers, that's for sure. Now, what determines how much each team gets? Well, it's a mix of two things where they land in the championship standings, and any special deals they've inked with F1 management. These side agreements can mean extra money for historic achievements, or just being a legacy team like Ferrari, which pockets 5% of the total prize pot, and drivers get special bonuses too. Take Max Verstappen, for example. After getting the 2021 championship, his wallet got a huge boost from $21 million to $34 million. Not bad, right? But that's not the only way these teams make money. Because next on the track, there are sponsorships. This is every team's trusty sidekick. Beyond just slapping logos on their machines, sponsorships are the lifeline of F1 teams. The thing is, sponsorships might not always bring in cash, but they open doors to tech upgrades, performance boosts, and competitiveness. These partnerships help cover the day-to-day -day operations of the teams, as well as pushing the boundaries of technology. Without them, it's like trying to race with a flat tire. If you want to understand just how important sponsorships are in F1, look no further than Red Bull Racing's collab with Oracle. This isn't your average sponsorship. 
With an estimated investment of $90 million in 2024, Oracle is bringing some serious technical knowledge to the table. From enhancing efficiency to fine-tuning strategies, these partnerships are like rocket fuel for teams. But there's more, because up next is merchandise and licensing. Formula One teams can rake in quite a bit of cash from merchandise sales and licensing. This also helps to boost a global connection with fans. Merchandising includes everything from clothing to sleek caps and collectible models. Safe to say, F1 teams really have turned merch into a serious moneymaker. But you just can't slap a logo on a shirt and call it a day. We need to feel valued, like we're part of something bigger. And that's where brand loyalty comes in. Limited edition items and collaborations with top designers help to make you feel connected to F1 teams. Team haulers and mobile shops are strategically positioned at racetracks to make sure we can easily get access to these items. Many people consider stopping by at these shops as a way of further immersing themselves in the F1 experience while also supporting their favorite teams. It not only helps to strengthen the community aspect around Formula One, but it also leads to a lot of money being generated for the teams themselves. Of course, to continue generating more and more profit, you've got to keep up with the latest developments and trends. This is where digital marketing comes into place. Nowadays, with the click of a button, fans from all corners of the globe can dive into virtual team stores, stocking up on official gear and accessories. These digital storefronts help further the sales for these teams, allowing people who couldn't make it to the actual race to still contribute to the revenue. They are also a great way of truly making F1 feel like a global event that brings in millions of people in viewership each year. So whether you're in the heart of a busy city or in a remote corner of the world, you can now sport your favorite team's colors with pride. And speaking of merch, Formula One teams are masters of the licensing game. Partnering up with big names like Puma, Rolex, and Heineken, they've created a whole new universe of F1-related goodies. But there's another huge moneymaker that hasn't been addressed yet, and that is broadcasting and media rights. Just to give you an idea, there was an average viewership of 70 million per race in 2022 for F1. But what does that look like in terms of dollars and cents? Well, projections suggest that global media rights for F1 could soar to over $1 billion this year, with a potential $1.4 billion by 2029. And turns out that the United States is playing a huge role in this media frenzy, with a huge 36% year-over-year increase in viewership, hitting 1.2 million viewers per race in 2022. But it's not just TV networks cashing in on the action. Formula One is teaming up with big players like Live Nation Entertainment, opening up exciting new revenue streams. With Liberty Media holding a 31% stake in Live Nation, partnerships like these have a direct impact on mega events like the Las Vegas Grand Prix, which brought in $500 million in ticket and hospitality revenue. And even with streaming being a huge thing nowadays, TV franchises still fit into Formula One's financial structure. But of course, F1 has also experimented with digital media through partnerships with Netflix, Amazon Prime, and ESPN. Netflix's Drive to Survive series is a great example of this. It's been a smash hit and could end up paving the way for more collaborations between the platform and F1. But like we said, even with all the money coming in, the costs are equally large. Formula One teams pump their funds into four main areas, research and development, salaries, production, and operations. Teams spend a lot of cash on activities like wind tunnel testing and track trials, ensuring their machines perform at their peak. Then there are the big bucks going to salaries. Top-notch drivers like Lewis Hamilton have to be paid high sums to keep them on the payroll. Production costs are huge, too. We're talking about the manufacturing of new parts, getting components, and even building or buying engines. This alone can cost well into the millions for the teams. Finally, there are operational costs. This usually involves stuff like sorting out logistics and travel arrangements to entertaining clients and shipping gear to various places around the world. So clearly, despite the potential to bring in hundreds of millions of dollars, Formula One, like any other business, has to keep the costs in mind too. 
Anyway, if you want to check out some more content on F1 racing and its history, make sure to click on this next video.